Imagine walking through the jungle, not knowing where the tiger is, but they've told you there's a tiger loose in the jungle with you. You're going to be nervous. You're not going to walk through la, 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 la. Oh, it's a great day. Nothing's going to happen to me. Oh, wait, what? Like, if you know a tiger is close, you are looking with your head on a swivel. Your sphincter is tight. You're, every, you're forcing everything. You're asking your caddy, hey, where's that tiger? On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. One of a kind opinions, big name guests, the teams you care about every, every, every day. It's the Ron Johnson Show, part of Locked On Sports Minnesota, and it starts now. Welcome to the Ron Johnson Show, and I'm your host, Ron Johnson. On today's episode of the Ron Johnson Show, I'm excited. My daughter is going to join us. She has a couple questions uh, for Gopher softball coach, Coach Ritter. And so I'm excited that my daughter gets to join the Ron Johnson show today. Also, we have to talk NBA. Yes, the Timberwolves are out, but the Timberwolves don't know how to go into the night quietly. And that's Pat Bev. Uh, we saw Anthony Edwards. I don't know if it's been deleted or it's just, you know, he deleted off his Instagram, uh, but he was a part of this as well. We're going to talk NFL later in the Daily Three. Drew Brees, is he coming back? Tiger Woods, is he back? So as we jump into this, as I bring my producer in, Sam Ekstrom, Sam, Pat Bev. Pat Bev. And I don't know where to start with this. One. So this is what I'll say. I'm all for trash talking. I'm all for uh, confidence. I'm all for... Um, Whatever it is you have to do to get yourself going again, you know. Now, if they were still in the playoffs, I'd understand the animosity. Uh, this is where I'm going to go with this, Sam. Pat Beverly's comments about Chris Paul. And so we saw a bunch of players stand up for him. Matt Barnes being one on ESPN. Uh, you've seen some other guys saying he's completely out of pocket. I'm going to agree with them. And this is why. Chris Paul is a Hall of Famer. Chris Paul is one of the best guards, point guards that we've seen in this NBA history. Um, Chris Paul, when you put him back in his prime and you put him back with um, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin, um, fast paced offense, Chris Paul out there throwing oops, you know, getting to that free throw line, stop, pop, shot, you know, alley oop. Chris Paul was a force to be reckoned with. And so back then, I could see Pat Bev saying i'm i'm going to sleep i'm going to sleep before i gotta play the clippers i'm going to sleep before i gotta deal with chris paul um chris paul with devin booker still a scary duo um that team can't deny they were the number one seed they had a bad night and that happens michael jordan has had subpar nights lebron james has had subpar nights it doesn't change the fact and and when matt barnes his comment was you're not that guy like you're not anthony edwards you're not carl anthony towns uh you're not reggie miller you're not michael jordan you're not kobe bryant why are you talking down uh to a hall of famer and i get that now this is the other thing though in the media they pay us for our opinions the media also pays players to do what he did. Why? Because now that show is getting a ton of publicity. Pat Bev is going to be in the media for the next who knows how long this offseason. It's going to become a big deal the next time he faces Chris Paul, if he has the opportunity, if Chris Paul doesn't retire. Um, so there, there's a lot to this. Uh, Pat Bev is building his, his post-football career. He's trying to get himself in one of those seats to say, look, I'll say whatever to get the, the, the meter moving. And so I can respect that. I can respect it. Um, he didn't completely say, you know, he's a terrible player. He just said, look, I'm not going to sleep uh, early against Chris Paul. I'm going to sleep at 8, 8 p.m. against Steph Curry. Um, I might not, me personally, I'm not leaving the room if I know I got to play Steph Curry. Uh, but, he, you know, he's talking about he's going to go out. He's going to go to dinner. He's going to have himself a steak, all this other stuff. Before he plays Chris Paul, he's not worried about him. You can't say that when you're the seventh seed and you were in a playing game to get into the seventh seed because they were upset i guess the suns must have made a comment because i saw anthony edwards video uh that the sun says something about like you better hope you're in the playoffs or get in the playoffs before you talk to us or something to that regard i understand the animosity but i don't understand the slander for no reason i don't understand trying to talk down to a hall of famer uh you just don't do it and that's my thoughts on that 
Pat Bev is going to be Pat Bev, right? He's an agitator on the floor. So why would he not be the agitator off the floor? I think he's clearly auditioning, like you said, to have a seat on that panel on the ESPN NBA show in 2025. And the, the NBA media loves Pat Bev because he stirs the pot. He gets people talking. I think it's interesting because in a, in a battle between two kind of unpopular play, Chris Paul, I wouldn't say he's all that popular of a star. I think he's, he's not that much. He's kind of surly. He's not that marketable. Um, he tends to lose in the big playoff games, which is why they're having this criticism in the first place. And then Pat Bev gets under everybody's skin. So in this battle between two kind of controversial figures that not everybody loves, people are taking Chris Paul's side. And I think that just goes to show the respect they have for Paul's history, um, the amount of, of games he's played, what he's done for the league. And Beverly, I mean, he is ultimately, he's a sixth man. He's a seventh man. He's a bench guy. Um, so when you're talking that way about somebody else that is clearly like higher in stature than you on the NBA ladder. Yeah. I think that, that the stars are going to come out and see the inequity there that, Hey, you know, you, you you're never going to be the guy who everyone is relying on in game seven. That's just not who you are. So you don't know what it feels like to be in Chris Paul's shoes. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, like you said, he's an agitator. That's his role. Um, he's going to ride this now this wave he's put himself on he's gonna have to go up against now jj riddick you know jj's gonna have something to say about that matt barnes already spoke his mind about that so pat bev's gonna have a long off season but i mean if he's trying to get himself in one of those seats you know draymond green now has a deal with tnt that when he's done uh tom brady has a deal when he's done so now that's that's what it's about because getting those meetings when you're out of the league um it's not easy when you're in the league Players always want to talk to, or media always wants to talk to you. They want you on their shows. When you're done, they don't care. You know, they could care less about what you're still doing. Um, and I think that's why so many guys, and then these contracts, again, Pat Bev sees this money. When you look at these contracts, you know, if you can get one of those big time Reggie Miller seats or, you know, Charles Barkley and Shaq can't do this forever. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to try though, but they can't do it forever. Kenny Smith. You know, that's why Draymond was at to see like he fit. He He's willing to talk crap. He's willing to, you know, fight and stand up for himself. So he fits in that crew. Um, he has won championships as far as Draymond goes. So Draymond fits. Tom Brady, same thing. Championships, reputable. Um, Eli and Peyton, Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi. Um, you know, it's that's what it's becoming now. It's becoming athletes speaking their mind. That's why you see all these athlete first platforms now. You see all these athlete first movements, these podcasts, these shows. Um, whether Pat Bev ends up on a big time show or he gets his own, where he's just gonna talk crap about people, that that's that's what's 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 where we're gonna see. But I if I were Pat Bev, I would tread lightly because a guy like Chris Paul with an ap athlete's first platform, we had Kendall Shell uh on our show as well, and he's a part of that in uh what is it, players TV is what it's called. Chris Paul was a part of that starting that. Um, I'd be very careful because there's a chance he could be or could have gotten a spot at, at NBA TV or TV uh, players TV. I don't think that's going to happen now. Chris Paul's like, you think I'm going to give you a job, a, a chance? Or Chris Paul can say, you know what? That's just a competitor in Pat Bev. I get it. Hey, let's put it. Let's put something together. You and I let's let's debate back and forth because Chris Paul could could kill him with one chop as far as accolades go and stats and numbers. And the funniest tweet I've seen, and, and I'm going to end it with this before we uh, bring Coach Ritter in, somebody tweeted something like, man, y'all y'all stop tripping. Oh, it was Dame Lillard. He said, y'all stop. Not, he didn't say it. Somebody said, y'all stop tripping on Pat Bev. Man, the guy has good stats. Dame Lillard's response was, yeah, because nobody's <laughs> guarding him. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. with that said, that's what a lot of players think of Pat Bev. Uh, he does guard all those point guards, and so they don't like him. But – Again, now that gives Dame Lillard, all these other point guards, Steph Curry, the opportunity to really just go at them next year and say, you know, I really don't care that it's week one or it's week seven or it's week 25. I'm going at Pat Bev because I know Pat Bev doesn't go to sleep when he's playing me. He's only going to sleep when he's playing Steph Curry. So he's writing some checks that Anthony Edwards got to cash because it's not coming down to Pat Bev hitting the big shot. Anthony Edwards and Carlton Towns have now – the, the gauntlet has been put down on the NBA where the Timberwolves now are going to be one of those teams maybe where people are watching because they're like, what, what are teams going to do now? They don't like the way those guys ended the season and they can come back and bite you. Well, up next, we're going to have Gophers 
head coach Piper Ritter, 2001 to 2004 grad. She was in school. I think I was a senior when she was a freshman. So we're going to catch up with, with Coach Ritter next on the Ron Johnson Show. Next up on the Ron Johnson Show, as promised, Gophers softball head coach Piper Ritter, former alum, just like me. When you look at Minnesota and the 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 trajectory of coaches, you got Piper Ritter softball, Ben Johnson with basketball, Lindsey Whalen uh, with girls basketball or women's basketball. And so it's starting to become a movement now of former players getting the opportunity to come back and coach. So Piper, first question, how did that feel when you got that call to become the Gophers head coach? You know, obviously I've, I've grown up here, you know, with my collegiate career and then, you know, coaching under three different head coaches. I just knew it was the time, the time was right. And there was no other place that I wanted to be. I wanted to still, you know, be able to coach uh, great, great athletes at this university. And so when Jamie Traxel left, um, it was kind of a right fit at the right time. When, G uh, when Jessica Allister left, um, I was a brand new mom, my four month old daughter. I just didn't know how, just how everything was going to shape out. But when Jamie left, it was kind of one of those things that now's the time and I couldn't be more proud. Um, you mentioned a couple of the alums that are now coaching. We, we have Ginny at, in gymnastics. Um, we have a lot of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and so Mark Coyle is doing a great job when you, when you, when you think about that, that's what fans love uh former alums love to see uh because so often people feel like you know how can you get somebody that really cares to recruit for your school and it's somebody that's been there i think that's the key proponent of what's going on um and so looking at recruiting you know that 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 is becoming an evolving uh monster i guess i'll call it nils all this crazy stuff out there um, but when you look at local players and you're going to, you know, all these high schools in Minnesota to recruit, um, what is the one thing, being a former player, what's the one thing you kind of tell these girls? Because when you look at uh, Maddie Schwartz, who went to Wisconsin, um, and she's from Chanhassen, how do you make sure that doesn't happen, that you're losing kids to, you know, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State? Yes, absolutely. You know, actually, Madeline's sister is going to be um, with the Gophers next fall. So that's pretty ex exciting. Um, you know, softball's growing. So it's growing in the sport of Minnesota. We always want the best to play at the University of Minnesota. And that is my goal. Um, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we went after Natalie Din Hartog as late as we went after Natalie Din Hartog. Um, every now and then you're going to lose lose one or two like uh, like Maddie. But um, the goal, the goal the whole time is always to, you know, keep the best in the state. And pitching. So you were or are the current whip, like leader. So you didn't even know that walks, hits for those of the novice walks, hits and then innings pitched. Um, you are the leader, like your percentage is the best in Gophers history. I know, you know, like you said, you got some incoming pitchers. I know they're, you know, they're thinking that like, you know what, if I can take coach down, that would be so cool uh, because she'll be there to watch me get my roses. Um, when you think about that, though, that that since 2004, there hasn't been anybody to kind of do what you did. Like, does that, you know, does that make you want to get on the plane, you know, tomorrow and kind of, you know, poke your chest out or, you know, make sure to remind your girls, hey, you're chasing greatness? No, uh, I mean, I think any anytime anyone uh, breaks a record, you know, whether it's a hitting record, a stolen base record, a strikeout record, um, anything like that, you're proud of them because, you know, uh, records are made to be broken. So I think my strikeout record uh, has been broken by three former players um, that I coached and I, I love it. That just means they're doing the right thing and and they're going up from there. Yeah, because I had all three records at Minnesota, receiving yards, touchdowns, catches, and I, I did not like it. Like Eric Decker broke one, then Tyler Johnson broke another, and then Rashad Bateman. Um, none of them will ever get my catches in a career, uh, like game by game. I caught a pass in every single game. So at least I get to hold on to that. It can only be tied. It cannot be broken. That's what I've been told. So, um, well, now with these COVID years, who knows now? Somebody might break it because now guys are getting six years. Uh, but they'd have to do it every single game. So I don't. that's, that's tough to not get hurt in, these, in college sports. Um, coach, you have made it to the national champion or not, sorry, the, the nationals, you made it to nationals, not the championship, but you made it to nationals. Um, and myself and my daughter were huge gopher fans for all sports. So we just went to the track meet, uh, this past weekend, big tens were in, we're in Minnesota. So we went there, my wife, uh, former Olympian and, and gophers track runner. Um, but, but when you look at the RPI, you look at the top 25, um, I see a lot of grumblings on Twitter from like other coaches, other players, 
Uh, everybody's not completely happy with some of the teams that got in and some of the teams that did not make it. Uh, where do you stand on how that committee does this? Um, any Anytime you're in the bubble, you're going to put it in someone else's hands. I mean, I think the committee being here at Minnesota long enough, we've seen the committee make some very interesting choices about things. <laughs> and someone's always going to have an opinion about it. I do think that we um, scheduled a very hard schedule to put ourselves in the best possible position. Did we lose some that might have made the committee kind of think a little differently? Absolutely. But um, one thing that we really did, and I'm so proud of the uh, the Gophers, is they came out and they won a lot of games at the end of the end of the uh, season that we needed to win. Yeah, Coach. And before we uh, get to the last question, I'm going to let Cameron. So my daughter Cameron is going to ask you a question now. Hi, Coach Ritter. My name is Cameron Johnson, and I was wondering if you wanted to play college softball when you're older, what to do to lead you up to that. Awesome. Um, have a passion for it and love it. You know, I think at an early age, did I know I was going to play softball? Absolutely not. I thought I was going to be go be a swimmer. Um, but I found a passion and a love for this game and keep working, whatever your craft is, you know, whether you're a hitter, um, whether you're a speedster, whether you're a pitcher, whether you're a catcher, um, love your craft and do it as much as you can. Yeah, Cameron's gonna be excited to see that one. She was like, I don't know if coach is gonna like understand my question. I'm like, just ask it. Like, it's a good one. Um, and, and so last one, coach, you know, you got you are a pitcher. So I'm it's kind of a two-part question. You were a pitcher. Oklahoma has one of the best hitters in college softball history. They are the number one team. You're in their pool. Um if you were the pitcher, so let's go back to you were in college. If you were the pitcher. Would you want to walk her or would you say, no, we're going to go at this. I'm going to make sure I keep it out of her zone. Like I'm not walking this girl just to get to the next girl. You know, I think you have to look at who, what they're doing in front of her and what they're doing behind her. Um, they're, they're stacked, you know, one through nine. Um, they have some pretty good hitters behind her and you have to look at what those, what those players have done um, how their swings have been with, um, with the pitcher that you have in the in the circle, because you know, no matter who we're playing, whether we're playing Oklahoma or whether we're playing someone else, um, at the end of the day, you don't want their best pitcher or their best player to beat you, and so you always go in with a game plan that if the game's on the line, um, are we going to let her beat us or are we going to go to someone else? Now, at that game, someone might be seeing your pitcher better than that that person, so you might have to go after them because maybe the other person, you know, is seeing beach balls that day. And, yeah, and, and and you've seen the videos. I know you, you watch softball, everything. So, I mean, she's taking her armbands off before the fourth pitch is even crossing the plate now. Like girls haven't even released the ball and she's already throwing the bat down, taking the taking the Evo shield off. If that were you pitching and you know she's going to do that because you watch it on Twitter a ton, are you just going to throw her a, a th third strike just to be a like, you know, just to get under her skin a little bit? Or are you just going to do what coach said and just go ahead and walk her and move on to the next? Uh, I don't know. I mean, back in the <laughs> when I played, uh, we had some pretty powerful hitters, um, Stacey Newman and a handful that got walked quite a bit as well. And, you know, I remember there was a lefty that would get walked a lot. And, you know, she someone told me this. We didn't have Twitter back then. Right. Um, <laughs> that she started to walk down to first base before that pitch got thrown. So I don't know if she's necessarily the only one that's ever done it. Um, there are some people who do it. But if that's if that's the way they go, they go. That's all right. So it's just the Twitter error. I, I say that too. Like, I'm glad. I'm honestly glad we didn't have social media back in 2001 because the things that happened on the Gophers campus, it did not need to be on video half the time at the library and all those bars and places. And yeah, it just wouldn't have been good. Uh, we would have probably been at least football players. I know not me, but some of my teammates would have been suspended off videos alone uh, of just dumb stuff. Brock Lesnar. I mean, you remember those days. Uh, last one, coach. So heading into this, you, you see your pool, you got Texas A&M, you got, uh, I think it's Prairie View A&M, and then you have Oklahoma. How do you get your girls mentally ready, you know, for this moment to say, you know what, if we do something that nobody thinks we can do, you know, we can, we can, we can shake the world up. You know, I think that we've been doing it all season. We've put pressure on them. We've played some unbelievable teams um, all season long, and um, they just have to keep doing what they're doing. And, you know, the, the pressure's on them, the expectation's on them, not on us. For us, we just got to take it one pitch at a time. And um, I've seen years where Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma or someone gets upset, you know, a game or two. So the pressure's on them. We just got to enjoy the game.
Well, Pat, Coach Piper, Ritter, I want to thank you for joining me on the Ron Johnson Show. This has been a long time in the making. I've been trying to get you on, and we finally made it work. And then congratulations on making it to Nationals. We will be watching you guys. Yes, thank you. All right. Well, next up, we got the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes. Stay tuned. Next up on the Ron Johnson Show, my favorite segment. That's the Daily Three. That's three questions in three minutes each. Take it away, Sam. Vikings began OTAs yesterday, but they have an open practice for reporters this afternoon. I'll be out there taking it all in. Ron, are there any position battles you want me to watch for? Yeah, I'd say for sure cornerbacks. Like, let's see what that cornerback group looks like. You got Andrew Booth. You still got Cam Dantzler. Um, you got uh the kid out of missouri as well um and so you have a, a lot of guys i mean patrick peterson's patrick peters we know what he's gonna do you still got Shannon sullivan Shannon son of sullivan came in as a nickel but it doesn't mean he doesn't want to play outside corner i mean mckenzie alexander i would ask him all the time like can you play outside now do you still want to play outside you did it in college and he's like yeah they just think i'm good at nickel and so they're gonna go with me at nickel and they have their two starting so Shannon sullivan is not coming in just i mean he's gonna play nickel but don't 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 forget that he still want you know can and did play corner his whole life um so i think that cornerback battle is going to be kind of cool to see uh their growth uh their improvement i think receivers are pretty much set i think there's going to be some back end battles for special teams wise with uh naylar out of michigan state um and then offensive line those guards and centers i think that's the one we know the tackles are pretty much set but those guards and centers I think that's going to be a nice one to see too. Like, how do they look? And of course, OTAs, you can't really get a feel for it, but you can get a feel for reps. Like who's getting the most reps? Who looks like they're they're comfortable in that position? I think that's kind of going to be the things to watch. Yeah, I'm, I feel good about the starting lineups. Uh, maybe at guard, there's some question, but at those skill positions, who are the key backups? Like is Amir Smith-Marset going to contend for the wide receiver three? Uh, who's going to be the second tight end, which we talked about yesterday? Mm -hmm. Who's going to get second team running back reps behind Cook? Is it Madison or do, does do Wang Wu and Chandler contend for that? So I'll be watching some of those battles as well. Um, back to golf. Tiger Woods is back at it at the PGA Championship in Tulsa this weekend. Tiger says his leg feels stronger than it did at the Masters five weeks ago. Ron, can Tiger contend for the title? Um, I'd say yes, but this is the thing. It depends on where he finishes in the cut when you're looking at if he can make it to that third day. Um, if he's so far back where it's not even like it, like he has to do like magic tricks to get, you know, some some scoring, no. But if he's one or two shots back, oh yeah. Because then it becomes mind over matter. It becomes mind over strength. The fact that Tiger is within striking distance, it's literally like actually being in the jungle. Like imagine walking through the jungle, not knowing where the Tiger is, but they've told you there's a Tiger loose in the jungle with you. You're going to be nervous. You're not going to walk through la 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 la. Oh, it's a great day. Nothing's going to happen to me. Oh, wait, what? Like if you know a Tiger is close, you are looking with your head on a swivel, your sphincter is tight, you're, every, you're forcing everything. You're asking your caddy, hey, where's that tiger? Where, where's tiger at? You're, you're never, I mean, even though guys mentally say, you know what, man, I'm playing my game. I'm going to play my game. It doesn't, tiger is tiger. Like he has, like he will go down as the best golfer in, in PGA history. He's right up there. We know with Jack Nicholas. like if there was a Mount Rushmore of golf, tiger is on it. And so that's the key is like you're playing against it's like Jordan. You know, if you if Jordan in his prime, you were scared to death if you were close, like you wanted to blow the Bulls out. The Bulls were within two points. It's never over because it's if there's 10 points. If they were within 10 points in five mm -hmm. minutes, it's not over because it's Michael Jordan. And that's where Tiger Woods lands you. Tiger Woods is the best golfer, in my opinion, in, in MPGA history. And so that's where I'm going to lay with that one. Uh, I think he can contend, but it's going to come down to day three, the championship day, if he can even make it to that red shirt or pinkish shirt now, whatever he wants to do with it. Uh, but if he can make it, then yes, because if he's within striking distance, he mentally can wear on some guys uh, that might be nervous about where Tiger's at. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. <clears throat> Excuse me, because in the Masters, he deteriorated on Saturday and Sunday. He was so far back, and you could tell he wore out. So he's got to he's got to score the first two days and mm -hmm. give himself a shot. If he does start to wear down, being close, you know, to the, to the lead might sort of pull, carry him through 
uh, those last couple of days. Yeah. Interesting tweet from Drew Brees, who yep. is out at NBC after one year as an analyst there. And in the tweet, he said, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I might do all sorts of things, maybe even play football. Would Drew Brees fit on anybody's team in the NFL this year? Do you think he's serious about making a comeback? Yeah, I, I think he is. Like, I mean, you, you see Tom Brady. Quarterbacks don't have to do a bunch with their, like, overall body. They have to have good core. They have to have good strength in their shoulders. They have to be healthy. Drew Brees sitting out, might he might be the healthiest he's been in, like, the last five years because his body just got to rest. He got to sleep in. He got to sit on airplanes and fly to the studio. I mean, he's gotten to golf. He's gotten to swim with his kids. Um, that's why he brought up all that stuff about I might coach my kids. I might do this. That's first. Second, being on TV isn't easy. And he's one of the guys that learned it. Jerome Bettis, you know, he was out there early with ESPN and all these guys that, you know, they don't keep. I was with the Big Ten Network in 2009 and I didn't get bought back. I mean, it's not easy. It it You have to work at it. You have to continue to, to work on your craft. My first year out of coaching in the NFL, going right to the to the to the booth and being a, a color commentary guy, I, I knew enough to talk. You know, I knew enough to be dangerous, but also knew enough to hurt myself. Um, you know, like I said, Regis Ben. I don't know why his name just popped up, but it popped up again. Um, and so Regis Ben, Aurelius Ben for Illinois, worst story ever. I was doing my first game, or no, not my first, it was like in the first season though, but I was doing Illinois versus Gophers. And I told some story about why he's called Regis. And I just should have just said he's Aurelius Ben, his nickname is Regis, and just left it at that. I tried to go into the story, and this is before the internet was fast, it's 2009. So it's like taking forever to load up, you know, Wikipedia, and I'm trying to get some kind of handle on this nickname nothing there was nothing out there about this guy's nickname and i didn't do my due diligence in the coaches interviews to ask them why do they call him regis i didn't do it i just i was i like thank god everybody wasn't watching the big 10 network and actually paying attention to every little thing like it they do now where i would have gotten chastised of like what is this guy talking about um because i know people watch because even when i did nevada new mexico state in uh vegas on fs1 I was calling out a couple plays and, and, and got them right. I, I, I Tony Romo the bit. And people were tweeting like, man, who is this announcer? Who is this? Is, is me and Anthony LaPanta. Like this guy. And it was the Nevada fans, of course. But this guy knows he's talking about. He's doing a good job of like figuring out our tight end. And he knows exactly when Romeo Dubs is going up the middle. And I just got lucky. Like, yes, I, I did guess. I did see the formation. I, I kind of take a, I took an educated, calculated guess. But I learned that too. So Drew Brees learned that. Uh, what team? The Saints. Come on now. Um, I don't see why not. Like Jameis Winston coming off injury, who knows if he's going to be ready to go. Steve Weiss brought that up. He did look good early on in the season, and then he kind of got in his own head. Uh, you know, health got into it a little bit too, but I think mentally he just got in his own head. I don't see why Drew Brees wouldn't go back to the Saints with that team. When you look at that way the guys they have now, Tyron Matthew, uh, you know, you have you added the receiver, uh, Chris Olave, you just got um uh Landry, uh Jarvis Landry, you know, so there's a lot where Drew Brees sees it. He's like, wait a minute. This is a pretty good roster. Like, if I come back, we can make some noise. And so I could see that. Other than that, I don't know another team that would, like, this late in the game, jump on them unless they really just don't go. Oh, Seahawks. I mean, but their roster, I don't know if, you know, I, I, they do have DK. Uh, but I don't know if he would want to do that. But Pete Carroll, he's an old dog. He knows Drew Brees' new tricks. So I could see Seattle looking for a quarterback as well because I don't think Drew Locke is the answer. Uh, but yeah, no, I can see Drew Brees coming back. Panthers, maybe. Panthers don't yeah, really have it. That. That'd be in, in the division. He played the Saints twice a year. Uh, if he went to the Seahawks, man, that division would uh, would get stacked pretty fast. But I feel like Seattle's committed to that rebuild. Yeah, Matt Corral's not happy either about dropping into the third round. He said he's never going to forget all the teams that passed on him. So we'll see if that actually comes back and becomes a thing where he's like a, a, a Russell Wilson, you know, round three, round four guy that ends up being a star uh, for the Panthers because the Panthers didn't even know who their quarterback was going to be. They committed to one guy 30 seconds later. Oh, wait, wait, hold up. Never mind. I, I spoke too soon. Um, but yeah, no, it, it should be an exciting season. I hope he doesn't go to Seattle. I just, just stay home and work on like Amazon prime or something like do some, do some commentary for Amazon, but yeah, he doesn't need to come back. Or if you're going to come back, come back for a team that doesn't have to play the Vikings. Like I, that's what I would say. Go back to a team that the Vikings don't have to face. Cause yeah, Drew Brees is going to make any team better. Uh, no matter, you know, other than the bucks, I guess, cause they have Tom Brady, uh, and some of these superstar guys like Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Like he's not going to improve them, but he can help out some teams. Uh, but who knows if a team wants him, if they want to pay him, he's old, he's been out for a year. 
Only time will tell. Well, that'll do it for the Ron Johnson Show. I want to thank Coach Piper Ritter for joining us today. Please go back and watch. Had a great question for my daughter, Cameron. So she now wants to actually come on and be a part of the show every once in a while. So we're going to figure that out in the summer when she doesn't have school. But I want to thank you for joining me today on the Ron Johnson Show. Uh, please subscribe on YouTube to Locked On Sports Minnesota. And you can also download and take us wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day.